Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. Uh, I was reading Newsmax, the fake conservative rag, and they, well, they send me stuff every day, and I keep up with them just because I used I used to do hits on their program, and uh, there's a there's a couple of good people over there. Don't misunderstand me, but it's not a conservative uh, outlet. It just flatly isn't. And I proved it to a friend of mine one time. I said, just look at the headlines. I go, the headlines are tell you everything because they give you the first impression of the article. And whether it's good or bad, if Trump did good or bad, the headline will be bad. And then you might get to the article and like, you know, like it'll be Trump embarrasses at the U.N. And hey, even though people are happy about it, Trump, you know, a lot of people are saying he's an embarrassment. They never write it from a not even a neutral perspective. They write it from a leftist perspective. Anyway, um, they were touting Hillary's downloads to her book and her uh, the number of books. She said, I think they said she sold 800,000 books. That's the report. No, that's not what she sold. That's what's been printed. And I have to tell you, you when it comes to the Clintons, you got to understand what you're dealing with. You got to understand that everything is orchestrated and contrived. So I talked about Hillary getting these set up questions with NPR that she later came back to, to untalk about all the things she's talking about on her book tour or quite frankly, there's nothing new. There's nothing salacious. There's nothing that talks about the controversy. It's all what happened. And, and, and let me promise you this. The people that are buying this drivel are getting these books at cost so that the numbers will rack up because they got to make Hillary look like she's relevant when she's not. So they said they they printed, uh, they were, they were very clear. They printed 800,000 books. You haven't talked about how many they sold. See, I think Simon and Schuster carries this one. Whoever it is, it's carrying the book. They look at it as Hillary's maybe a, she may be a lost leader. Now they lost a fortune on hard choices, but they go, it may be a lost leader, but it keeps us in the news. And that free press is worth it. Simon and Schuster, Hillary Clinton. Oh yeah, we did Hillary's book. So they'll go out and get a, a book they will actually sell. Like they'll go to, I don't know, the chick that wrote Harry Potter and go, we'd love to have your next book. We did Hillary Clinton. Oh, you did Hillary Clinton's book. So they'll use Hillary as a loss <laughs> in order to, you know, to feather their nest with this, with the other stuff. I don't know. I mean, and what gets me is in the downloads, I think they, they said, I forget how many, because Newsmax reported it. And it's a respectable number, but it isn't a respectable number for somebody with her clout. They're not going to get they're not going to get their money back on that number. Guys, something's uh, bugging, me, making my nose, um, you know, where I can't talk. Is there somebody like whoever did it? Just try to find it because it's bugging me right now. Anyway, I love that um, Hillary won't contest the election. That was the news we reported Now, again, NPR, she says, you know what? I don't know the mechanism involved. It could be maybe maybe brighter minds than mine might be able to figure it out. But I'm not one to contest. Then she clarified her statement the other day, which was left more ambiguity because essentially she said, you know, I don't know if there's a case. Uh, I'm not one to be talking about. Maybe it could be. I'm not sure, but I don't think there's a constitutional way. So what she says is, you know, I believe I'm president, but there's no way for me to technically prove it. So we have to just kind of leave things as they are. And you know what? I'm not going to contest the election. And I'm thinking to myself, you got to be pretty bold and pretty, pretty bold, pretty brazen to be sitting here. The loser. I mean, a complete loser, two time loser. And you're implying that, you know, I still have a, le- a legal remedy. Should I want to be president? First of all, Hillary. Oh, one of the things she said was like, you know, she referenced Kenya. We talked about this the other day. She referenced Kenya as if, well, if we did the election again the way they did in Kenya, things could be different. Let me tell you something, Hillary Clinton. If they redid the election today, poll numbers, whatever you say about Donald Trump, he would beat you worse than he did. That's what would happen. There's a part of me that wants to, 
you know, the wishes you could prove it. We could just go out and say, let's do a mock election. That's that, you know, we look at, do we treat validly? I would love to see this. This woman is full of herself. So the idea that I won't contest the election, I'm just going to let, you know, things stay. You know, it is my right maybe to contest. I'm not sure, but I'm going to leave it alone because I have no other choice because nobody wants you. I don't guys, I don't know how to tell Hillary Clinton or anybody else on the left this except to just be blunt. Hillary Clinton has lost so many Democrats because they finally got to see what a hypocrite she is. She cheated Bernie. And then in telling Donald Trump, you should, you know, we should respect our electoral process, blah, blah, blah. She lied when she lost and, and says, well, I won the popular vote. And now she's attacking the electoral vote. She's got minions talking about, we don't need the electoral college. This is awful, blah, blah, blah. And people wonder how Trump won. There was a leftist. He tried to explain the appeal of Donald Trump's UN speech. And uh, here's what he wrote. The big idea for many of the presidents of the president's core supporters, his appeal has always been more about tone than substance. I'll tell you this. Nothing could be further from the truth about me. I've never cared about Trump's tone. I've cared about the substance. Build a wall. Protect our borders. Make America great again. America first. Bring business back. Less regulation. Less government. He, his, his delivery is horrible, generally speaking. What this fool wants us to believe is that, you know, it's been about tone. Let me tell you about tone versus substance. That was the epitome of Barack Obama. Style versus substance. But you could substitute the word tone. Style over substance. I would love to have these guys tell me what Barack Obama did of consequence. If you're gay or you're Muslim, you might have a few things to talk to me about. But outside of that, nothing that helped the public as a whole. In fact, most of the policies that Barack Obama did hurt us. They made us less safe. They made us more vulnerable uh, from a financial perspective. We, I mean, there are people that can't afford health care. And that was going to be his legacy. We talked a little bit about it yesterday. That his his, uh, his uh, Obamacare looks like it's finally maybe gonna gonna die, and I don't know whether that's his Trump reaching out to the left and them finally saying, "Look, let's give a little to get a little." I, it's not for me to. to I, mean, I certainly don't know. I can I can speculate because that is my job. But whatever the case, we're finally getting something done that I hope is going to impact us. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about. The left is trying to explain Donald Trump's appeal. And then I want to give you a feel good story of something that happened a while back with the LGBT community that really set relations in America back quite a ways. But it looks like it's correcting itself. So stick around. We'll be back. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.